Hi everybody, how's it going? Mark here with another video. Um, what's happened this week? Uh, lots of stuff. Um, loads of great comics, absolutely fantastic. Won't be able to give them all their uh, needed airtime in that, but I'll do a few reviews today. And what else has happened? Um, oh, it was my birthday. Yes, my birthday. I know. I don't look old enough to have birthdays, but it's true. I did have a birthday. And I got some presents. I thought I'd show you some here. And first one we have is the Cleveland Show, season two. Bit hit and miss this one. And you know, it's there's been some times where I've watched this and I've just been rolling on the floor, crying my eyes out of laughter. And other times I've watched this and I've been sitting there thinking, why am I watching this again? And it's just one of it's good, but it's not consistently good. So you know, it's one of those ones where if you if you're doing something else in the background to watch, really. And what else have we got here? Ooh. And then we have Futurama season five, absolutely brilliant. If you liked the original Futurama first four seasons, if you liked the four Futurama movies that they brought out, you will absolutely love this. It's it just comes it. Uh, goes straight off from the last Future Armour movie that they had, which name escapes me at the moment. But yeah, absolutely brilliant. The only thing with this is, is that this is this is really weird. Right? Other than the fact that I've just broken it. No. Um, the Cleveland Show, yeah, I mean this, this is probably just in the UK, right? The Cleveland Show has four discs in it. This one only has three because the other discs in my DVD player at the moment so I'm watching it. Um, so this has four discs in it. But the Future Armour one only has two discs. See, two discs. Now I know you're probably sitting there thinking, well, because Future Armour has only got um, so many episodes in the series, I know there's only about 13 episodes in the season, but American Dad and Family Guy, who in the UK they usually put about 13 to 15 episodes on, uh, you know, on the discs and that, and they get three discs so it's just weird. it's not really a complaint it's just more of a, a question than anything. um but anyway as well as that also family guy season 11 it's got to be done absolutely brilliant tv show one of the best out there there is other than the big bang theory simpsons um and a few other ones that i watch <laughs> Uh, what else is there? Oh yeah, with, with birthdays obviously you get birthday cards and I've had some really nice birthday cards with people but this absolutely takes the biscuit. This is absolutely fantastic. Look at it. Amazing smile one. Look it. If you can't see what it says, it says Something tells me you're another year older. Could be my spidey sense. Or maybe it's your wrinkles. Absolutely brilliant. Love it. You know, me to a T. So... Uh, what else has been happening? Um, I've just got into the Venture Brothers. I know, I can hear you all sitting there going, but that's been out for years. Yes, I know, but I've only just started reading, watching it, so, and I absolutely love it, and I can't wait until they start bringing out season five, which I believe they started, they start, start making it like late last year, so it should be out around about somewhere this year sometime, I think. But yeah, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> fantastic characters in it um, what else we got uh, oh yeah I um, don't know if this is out in America I don't know if this is just a, a, a UK thing but the Tops have brought out a new card game in the UK at least it's called Hero Attack trading card game yeah this is the folder that you get with it All right, and you get all these little doohickey things that you stick your cards in and I'll give you an example of some of the cards this one here is the incredible, I don't know if you can see that from there that's the incredible hulk, that's what they call uh, a rainbow card yeah, because it's just basically holographic and then you have if I can get that one in without doing any damage then you have normal, what they call mirror cards, which is just a shiny card that's black uh, Black Widow there, yep. And then you get other normal cards like this, Ms. Marvel. 
can't see, not really that shiny. And you got other ones, villains and weapons and such. And of course, the one the one card that I take out, I can't just put back in properly. So it's just going to look ridiculous on this video. But I don't care. I'm not editing. <laughs> and you also have, which is quite interesting. Obviously, obviously, um, you might have heard there's this little low budget movie coming out in a few months time it's to do with comic books I mean you probably never heard it. it's called some Avengers yeah yeah well in this trading card set there are movie cards from this low budget you know, chick flick I think it's gonna be really um, that's one of the characters that's uh, Maria Hill from the Avengers movie and you know you get a board a playing board with it as well uh, and then on the back of that shows you a picture of all the cards you can collect 224 all in all now as I said there's 224 cards to collect in this set which isn't that bad I've collected card sets that had 300 and more cards in it the only thing is is that in the folder you your little card doohickeys as they're going to be known, now known from um, you have nine slots to put your cards in, right? In each, each one, right? There are only 24 sheets in this folder. Nine times 24 is 216. There's 224 cards in the set. Where am I supposed to put my last eight cards? All right, it might not be a big thing. Okay, maybe I didn't need to raise my voice so much then, but still, Come on, tops. Think about it. Even if you put an extra one in the back, you know, and you only put eight cards in it. Ooh, yeah, come on. Think about it. God. Um. What else we got? Uh, got some additions to the family. Got three little baby rats, female rats. I won't show you them because they're, they're they're here at the moment. They're a little bit skittish. We've only got them today, and they are very welcome addition to our family. Maybe when they get a bit older, I might show you them. Obviously, you haven't seen our other rats yet. In fact, you probably didn't even know we had rats as pets. You do now. So, yeah. And what else we got? I think that's about it. And now we're going to go on to the uh, the review of the comics that I've been reading this week. Um, I haven't picked up that many. These ones I actually picked up off the internet, and they're comics that I would have normally picked up anyway. But I thought. I'm going to pick them up early off the internet because, you know, that's just the way I am sometimes. Spontaneous like that. You know, first up, we have from DC Vertigo, Fairest number one. This is the, well, what would it be? The third offshot series. Is it third offshot series? Yeah, third offshot series from the Fables series that's uh, out, still out by Vertigo. The other two, which was Jack of Fables, and there was another one as well, that name escapes me at the moment. <coughs> that wasn't the name of this comic. That would have been a really weird name for a comic, calling it my name, the, its name escapes me at the moment. Or would it? Yeah. Anyway, um, yes, Fair, Fairest. I'll admit, I haven't read Fables since issue 44. And I can probably hear Ghost Critic now going, No, why not? The reason why I cancelled Fables was, it was a long time ago, obviously, for issue 44, they're now on 100 and something, and I had to get rid of some comics. And Fables was one of those comics was I was just buying because it was in my standing order. Um, but I thought I'd give Ferris a go. You know, I haven't got a clue what's going on in Fables at the moment. Plus, as well as that, as a fantastic Adam Hughes cover. Um, I don't know if I can see if I can take it out without doing any damage to me or the comic. Really, really nice wraparound cover. Look at that. How's that? Really nice wraparound cover. Um, the interior artwork is by Phil Jimenzi. Jimenez, Jimenez, some guy called Phil, <laughs> and 
Why do, why do comic book writers and artists have such hard names to pronounce nowadays? Like, this is like Bob Smith done the artwork on it. It'd be great. I mean, this is absolutely gorgeous interior artwork. Look at that. That's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? This comic has Ali Baba in it. And he finds a bottle, hoping that it's got a genie in it that's going to give him three wishes. It hasn't. It's only got a bottle imp, which is no good. <laughs> um, but the imp turns around to Alibaba and says, look, I know this quest that we can go on to that will give you what you want. You know, it will make you rich. And so they go, okay. They go on this quest. And it turns out the quest is to find Sleeping Beauty. They find the Sleeping Beauty, only to find out there's not one Sleeping Beauty, but two Sleeping Beauties. Ali kisses both of them, and nothing happens. Then a fight happens, and then one of the Sleeping Beauty wakes up, and then that's the end of the story. I know, it probably didn't sound as exciting as it was in the actual comic, but this is a pretty good read. I didn't need to know what happened in the last 50 plus comics from Fables, plus Jack of Fables, plus the other series that they brought out, but it was a miniseries. I didn't need to know what happened in there, because this just... Yeah, it was just a really good starting point for the story. I'm sure that if you know what's happening in Fables, this would be a welcome addition to the set. And yeah, I mean, if you, you know, if you've got two dollars ninety nine spare, pick it up because it was pretty good. Next up, we have Night Force by Marv Wolfman and Tom Mandrake. See, I, I can I can pronounce those names. Come on, yes, make it easy for me, people. Um, Obviously, Marv Wolfman, Teen Titans, New Teen Titans, and Tom Mandrake, the Spectre, uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic artist. This is the third series that DC has brought out with the title Night Force. First one came out around about 1986, I think it was. might be a bit later than that, actually, 1981. Uh, um, and it doesn't seem like it's actually been touched by the reboot which is possibly one of the reasons why I like it if you probably know me I'm not really a big DC reboot fan there are some books that have come out of it but there are some good books that come out of it but I feel that the reboot didn't need to happen to bring those books out and a lot of the books they've got up, got out now have been damaged, the characters have actually been damaged by the reboot I mean Superman I thought Action Comics and Superman they were going really well now I'm not interested in the character Superboy the last series of Superboy was getting really good it was a really enjoyable read this series of Superboy after the reboot I would cross the road to make sure that I had no way of getting anywhere near it, really, because it's just a terrible, terrible, horrible comic. This isn't too bad, and like I said, I think it's because it doesn't look like it's been touched. It doesn't look like it's been touched by the reboot. Um, it's about people who are being brought together to stop a supernatural event happening, and... You know, it's just a it's just a really good read. And there's not much more I can say really. If you've got some spare change in your pocket, I would definitely say Night Force would be one of the ones to pick up. Uh, what do we have else? Oh yes. Amazing Spider Man by Dan Slot. Absolutely brilliant. Everything that Dan Slot does with Amazing Spider Man at the moment is just gold. From Spider Island to the two part vulture story to the last two part story where they had a, a brief glimpse of New York's future where everything was destroyed and they managed to stop it and this is no different this is the second part and the last part of the Spider-Man and Human Torch in space story Spider-Man Human Torch and James Jonason James Jonason is that right James J. Jonah Jameson's son is James Jonason isn't it? yeah they're in space they're surrounded by Octobot um, infected 
sp uh, spacemen and the crew on the space station, and they're trying to save themselves and the crew and the Earth, and it is just brilliant. Dan Slott knows how to draw, how to draw, uh, how to write Spider-Man. Absolutely fantastic. And as well as that, it looks like this is a prequel to the, what's going to be the Spider-Man event this year, which is Ends of the Earth, which also looks like it's going to be a pretty good story. So yeah, Spy Amazing Spider-Man, brilliant. Now what else we got? Animal Man, number seven. What can I say about Animal Man that I haven't said already? It's absolutely brilliant. The artwork, I don't know if they've, I don't know if they've changed the artist in here, but the artwork does seem to have gotten better. Whether it's just grown on me, or it, it, it has actually gotten better, the artist has got better himself, but the artwork in here is fantastic. Um, Jeff Lemire is spot on with this character. Again, this is one of those ones that, as far as I'm concerned, hasn't been touched by the dreaded reboot. And it is absolutely brilliant. Animal Man, Buddy Baker, has a dream which sends him into the future where he meets his daughter, who is now Animal Woman, and it's like an older version of John Constantine as well. And they're, they're fighting the rot. This also has mentions in it from Swamp, for Swamp Thing, Alex Holland. And it is a fantastic story. Really, really getting good. Really building up to be a great, great story. And finally, we have the sister, brother, store, brother comic to Animal Man, Swamp Thing. This is probably the best comic that come out this week. Um, the artwork in it is gorgeous. Scott Snyder is spot on with this. Yeah, you know, it, it's not again. It's not being touched by the reboot because this is just a continuation of everything that's happened from like the end of Brightest Day and Brightest Day Aftermath, Search for Swamp Thing. It is just an absolute joy to read. Everything is perfect about this comic, and as it says, it's it's the rebirth of Swamp Thing. I will say this that they do. He does portray the Parliament of Trees as being a bunch of dicks, if I can say that. Which I just have, so if I can't, it's tough. Uh, but I'm trying to think, and I think I think actually that's how the the Parliament of Trees have always been portrayed as a bunch of childish, snidey little demigods that rule the element of the the earth sort of thing but it you know it's a really good story you know and I think if you're not reading this you really need to pick, pick this and this up because they they are going to be crossing over very soon and I would hate it if you missed it right well there you go that's that for this week and hopefully you know, this gives you some idea of what comics to pick up if you haven't already picked them up. I hope to see you soon. Thanks everybody for subscribing. Thank you all for commenting and liking. I do like comments. I try to answer as many comics like comments as I can, and you know, it's always a pleasure to see everybody else's videos up as well. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon, and enjoy your comics. Ta-ta for now.